Howdy folks, this is Cliff. This is part one of rebuilding my gaming computer from 2009-2010. I'm refilming this section as I had originally used a digital video camera from Amazon that was of very subpar quality. So now I'm just using my phone to record this, so hopefully the quality is a little bit better. So, the, um, I've been building gaming computers for almost about 12-13 years now. And my first original gaming computers were really just OEM systems that had been that had a graphics card added to them, so they weren't really like what I would consider a gaming true gaming computer. But this is my first system that I built in late '09, early 2010, that I built completely like with components like off the shelf, so no OEM system, and this was all built, I guess, by hand. So starting off with the main board, this is an Asus P5N-D. This is an LGA 775 motherboard, normal ATX size. It's got, obviously, your LGA 775 chipset, four DDR2 DIMM slots, and I'll go over the memory in a little bit. It's got the Enforce 750i chipset with the NF200 chip for the dual 16x slots, and it has the Enforce NF430 chip right under this little heatsink here that handles the I.O. I have already taken this part board, uh, I guess completely apart. I, um, I popped off the heatsink here and here, and I have repasted both the Enforce uh, North Bridge and the NF200 chip, as well as the South Bridge, because they actually, especially these components under here, get really hot, hence why the ASUS actually included this fan. I also uh, dusted the fan and I have reapplied um, some 3 1 oil to the bearings as it was kind of a little bit loud. So let's go over the I.O. So you have your two PS2 ports. You have your SPDF audio and digital out audio. Parallel port, serial port. Four USB 2 ports. FireWire 8 under port. Gigabit Ethernet. Fired by the Enforce chipset. I believe it's a Marvel controller. The 7 one channel audio. I believe it's a Realtek chip for the, um, for the audio. We have two PCIe X1 slots. Two PCIe X16 slots, two regular PCI slots. You have your front port audio. I believe this is a FireWire front header. Two USB 2 front headers. This is the ASUS Q connector for the front panel. Four SATA 2 ports, IDE port, and four DDR2 memory slots. And uh, I've already populated the memory. One minor thing is that there is no cooling on the VRM. So this is not, and especially with this four pin connector, this board is not really suited for any intense overclocking. I, this was a budget board back in what would be late 2009, early 2010. I believe the board had launched in 2008 and so, or 2007, so it was definitely towards the end of its life cycle. I got it on sale. I believe the Core i series had either launched or was just about launching at this time. But I have gone, I went from a, with the CPU under here, under this uh, thermal take cooler that I salvaged. This is a QX6700. Uh, this is not the exact same CPU that I had when I built the computer. The original CPU I had was a Q6600, but I do not have that currently. Um, it was definitely a step up from my 2.8 gigahertz Pentium D that I had used in my last um, OEM system as my gaming computer. Uh, the QX or the, the Q6XXX series or the, the 6000 series were more akin to the modern Ryzen processors where they're a multi-chip module design where I believe it's kind of think of it like two core two duos on the same die. So there are two separate modules, each of two cores, and that means that both um, the two cores and the two cores have to communicate over the SF FSB. And that means I have to communicate over to Northbridge. So that's what the memory is obviously still unified because everything has to go through the Northbridge. But compared to like a true native four core design, it's got a little bit of a penalty. But four cores back then, it was a huge upgrade, especially over Pentium D going to core two. And it was a great performer. Uh, the QX6700 I have here, a little bit faster. Um, and I believe it can be overclocked a little better. It's got a huge TDP, hence why um, I got the huge cooler on. I originally had a smaller cooler, which I purchased too as well. I'll show that a little bit in the video, a little bit later in the video. So, main reason why I wanted to get this board back in the day. So before I even got the Q6600, I bought the board in a combo from TigerDirect.com with an Ultra case and an Ultra 550 watt power supply. And I was able to put my P5, I mean, my Pentium D in here and use the system until I, my 
I was able to save enough money for the Core 2 Quad, which I bought secondhand on eBay. The RAM, this is the original kit. Well, not the original kit, but the exact same kit that I had used back in the day. This is 8 gigabytes of DDR2 800 megahertz RAM by PQI. I believe it's called, it was like PQI Turbo. This was actually on the QVL list of the motherboard, so that's kind of why I bought it. Didn't really know exactly what I was doing back in the day. But um, it was good memory. It was cheap. And it was, I mean, for 8 gigs, it definitely got the job done back in um, early 2010, late 09. I picked that back up on eBay recently when I saw it launch. Well, I mean, when I saw it listed there. I've already uh, replaced the CMOS battery, so I'm going to have to reset the BIOS settings. I believe the board is flashed at the latest BIOS, but I'll make sure to do that as well. Some of the other reason why I got the board, is, besides being cheap, is I was um, a big fan of the dual PCI Express Time 16 slots. Uh, especially back in in the uh, start of last decade, SLI was still a very big thing. It was like it was a feature you wanted. It was a feature that Nvidia was really pushing. Nowadays, it's not really a big thing anymore. But you definitely wanted a system that was SLI compatible, and that was provided obviously by this Enforce chipset. A little drawback of this of using an Enforce chipset is obviously it gets really hot. Even though this is a this is only a 750i, not their top end 780i uh, SKU. Uh, it also has the North Bridge here, and then under here is the NF200 chip, which actually provides the, it's basically kind of like a switch for the PCI Express lanes. That's what provides the full dual time 16 slots that NVIDIA would recommend or at least require. I believe you need to do at least dual times eight slots. Um, so that chip, those chips get really hot. I've, as I said earlier, I've always, um, I've already repasted them. I'll see if I could put in some screen, um, some pictures I took earlier when I had the border apart. In cleaning, I've cleaned off the die and repasted it with some Arctic silver. Besides that, I also was able to reuse a few components. I'll go over that in part two. I mean, well, this is gonna be jump cut. I mean, now you're looking at the uh, GPU of choice that I used back in. Uh, with this build. So this is not the exact card I had, but this is the exact model. I purchased a EVGA uh, 8800 GTX second hand. Uh, I believe this was in 2009, so it was already a few years old by then, but this was really a beast of a card. I actually went from a Radeon, uh, I think it was a 3450 or 4350 to this card, and the performance was like night and day. So it was just so, it was like such a huge change. I was able to play like games in HD resolutions and not just 124 by 768. I've already um, taken this card apart. Yeah, I should touch that. I've already taken this card apart and I've repasted the um, the die, which is the huge, um, but I believe um, the uh, this series of cards actually uses a uh, heat spreader and TIM, kind of like modern Intel processors. So unless I actually delitted it, there is, it's probably still gonna run a little hot because the TIM is probably gone pretty dry underneath the heat spreader. but uh, I've already cleaned out the fan, I cleaned out the heatsink, uh, cleaned the card off completely. Uh, I have to fix this part of the bracket right here, got bent a little bit in shipping. But in terms of your ports on the graphics card, a little bit different from today's cards. You have two DVI ports, and this is a kind of like a composite video out. I mean, a component video out. You could get like HD TV signal off this, kind of like HDMI before HDMI. Card required two PCI Express uh, six pin connectors and drew like draw up, I guess theoretically up to 75 plus 150 so 225 watts but it definitely ran hot definitely can run real loud uh, and I can't believe I ran that this card off the ultra 550 watt power supply I don't even think it was 80 plus rated and I had to use a Molex a dual Molex to six pin connector for the other six pin connector but uh, I mean I guess I ran the card for two or three years of out any issues I never even blew up the power supply so that's good but um got 768 megabytes of I believe GDR3 RAM it's got the G80 core this was the original Tesla architecture and uh, DirectX 10 I believe capable not 10.1 which is kind of, kind of a bummer but I mean with card in this age now you can't really run anything modern on it anyway but I'll see if I could go over some benchmarks of some modern games later in this video series this is the original 
not the original, but the original model of wireless card I had. This is from the first computer that I actually had, which was an Optiplex GX260, well, a Pentium 4. I think I had that from like 06 to 0, or 05 to 07. And uh, this was the hand-me-down, or like the, one of the hand-me-down parts from it, which just, my Wi-Fi network sucked. And this basically covered me for just getting online and uh, at the time downloading games that weren't a ridiculous size. But uh, got it connected. I had no ethernet in my room and uh, it was cheap. That's why I got it. Moving on to storage. Now this isn't the exact drive I used. I used a Western Digital Blue 500 gig drive. This is a WD Black at um, 750 gigs. But this is um, SATA 2. That will be fine for my motherboard. Um, I've heard there's actually trouble with SSDs on the older Enforce boards. I might try upgrading the components in the board later to see what it would be like if I had upgraded it to this max. Because I have an SSD. I actually have a QX9650, which is the most powerful CPU you could get. Or... It's the second most powerful CPU you could get uh, for the LGA 775 platform besides modding it for Xeons from the 771 socket. Uh, this will be just fine. Uh, gonna feel weird going back to a spinning drive after using a solid state drive for so long. And then we just have a traditional SATA optical disc because back in the uh, late 2000s, early 2010s, optical media was still very important to have. So. Powering the system will be a uh, Seasonic G650 modular power supply, 80 plus gold. This is definitely going to be plenty for this computer. It's not going to be the permanent power supply. I will probably actually end up using reusing the power supply in the case in another build. Speaking of case, the case is a uh, carbide uh, 100R from Corsair. Big fan of Corsair cases, especially this one. It's more of a uh, uh, I'd say not gaudy, like most of the, the newer cases these days. So I'm a big fan of those cases, whereas um, the newer cases are definitely a little bit too much for me. I use a uh, Obsidian, I believe, 850 as my primary case for my current system. And the last little part I'll just show you is um, I bought this <laughs> this mass cool CPU cooler. This was the original cooler that I had for that system. This what this is what cooled my. Uh, Q6600. This is definitely a step up from the uh, um, the Intel stock cooler. Definitely a little bit heavier, but uh, it definitely was not a performer. And I am not using this for this build because of the QX6700 in the uh, the current build. Which w this would this would not be sufficient to cool that really. You could maybe get away with it if you're not pushing it hard, but I'm gonna just be using this uh, thermal tank tower cooler that I have installed. So there's all the uh, components assembled. I'm going to go and uh, start setting up the system, getting the motherboard and the power supply in, uh, installed in the case. Uh, I'll take periodic videos and pictures of my build progress. I don't really have a tripod mount for my phone, so I will not be doing like a time lapse or anything crazy like that. Maybe in the future if I get better at making this kind of content. But uh, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. A little bit. So a little bit of change of plans. Um, Trying to put this cooler in the Corsair 100R, it didn't actually fit, and I'm a little too lazy to change the configuration. So I'm going ahead, and um, this is a Rosewell uh, Blackhawk ATX case. This is um, was the gaming computer I had built for my friend using uh, spare parts I had lying around. This is the gaming case that I actually used uh, when I was in college for about five years. So it's actually pretty rusty, pretty beat up, but it's got full complements of fans. Uh, it's still in somewhat working condition, or I mean, all right condition, a little bit rusty in the top. This, I might make a, a video later. This is an Asus uh, P6 T6 Source Station Revolution. Uh, this is an X58 motherboard. Uh, this is what he was using with this uh, six core Xeon. It's a gaming computer until he just recently upgraded to a uh, Ryzen um, 3000 series system. So I'm gonna go ahead, take this motherboard out of the case and put in my motherboard. I'll probably make a video about this motherboard uh, at another time, and probably will be actually selling this, uh, not as is, but maybe as a gaming computer a little later. Okay, so I have basically everything installed in the case now. I uh, had to make a few changes. Ended up having to uh, reorientate this anyway because it was 
running into these 240 millimeter fans. So it turned out to be a lot easier than I was expecting. Just popped it off, twisted it, didn't even have to redo the bracket. I also added this um, Daptech USB 2.0 controller uh, as I was missing one of these slot blanks and it just fills in nicely. I did not have this originally and I also definitely did not have this um, USB 3 card. This was uh, present on the this was present on the P uh, the previous uh, works the X58 workstation uh, to add the USB 3 front to the case. Um, so I have everything modular, I mean everything, um, all modular cables installed that I think I need, everything kind of routed the best I believe I could. We'll take a look at the back side in just a second and then I will fire it up and we'll see how it looks. So here's the back uh, cabling job. I try my best to uh, route things in a coherent way. Um, most of the stuff will hopefully fit behind the back uh, back panel. It has about an inch or two of clearance. Uh, the biggest issue was um, I try to keep, I'm going to be putting the X58 motherboard back in this case afterwards. So I kept the two fan locations where they are and I just routed them to uh, this Molex connector plugged into these two uh, Molex three pin adapters. So I didn't end up having to route these two fans. Uh, there's only one other fan header that, that would be, I'd have to route it all the way from there to here. So that would be a little bit annoying. So I kept those in the same location. Uh, I also had to hook up the two front fans via Molex as well. And this is the top HD dock. Uh, it's plugged in, it's fully working. Here's a SATA cable going into the, there's only four SATA ports. And I had to use two DVD drives because I don't have a five and a quarter blanker for the um, front. So I had, uh, or I'm missing one. So I had to put, there was two drives in there anyway. So I, I could have left one on the plug and just use it as a, a blanking device. But I feel like that is a somewhat decent job considering like how many components I'd have to hook into. Uh, obviously newer computers, you don't have to worry about optical drives. You don't even really have to worry about SATA drives. If you're just having an NVMe storage, it makes it much easier. It makes it much neat much neater. We can take a look around the back of the system. As you can see, got the GPU hooked up, USB 2 card, USB 3 card, and that Railink Wireless card. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close up the case and let's see if it turns out. So, as you can see, uh, we have the system up and running. I'm going to have to go ahead and set the, the time and date and also basically set all the BIOS settings since I replaced the uh, clock battery. Looks like we detected all our drives, so that's very good and it detected all our memory. I forgot to mention it, but the um, I bought the motherboard off eBay and it came with a CPU pre-installed, a Core 2 Duo, and it had thermal paste on the bottom of the CPU, which was on the pins, so I had to clean the uh, actual pins of the LGA 775 socket with a needle, just try to rub off as much of the thermal compound as I could, and I wanted to make sure that it actually detected all four memory channels after that. So you can see, here's the computer up and running. It's got, um, it's a little bit noisy at the moment, definitely that chipset fan, even though I re, um, uh, even though I re-grease it up, it's still clicking a little bit. Uh, the fans are all running at 100% right now because I haven't set any of the, um, fan control profiles in the BIOS yet. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's take a look actually at this. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. So the time is about, uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, 17, that's good enough. The date is, um, uh, do I have to hit enter or is this tab? Let me see, change plus minus, plus minus on this boss. Oops, I'm using one of these, uh, small Logic Tech keyboards. This is what I use for all my project builds because, uh, I can just use the mouse if I need to. Okay, so I want to go ahead and, um, uh, Minus, minus plus, that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, shift plus. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, we'll do the date. In there. I'll do the date off camera. Let's go ahead and just no floppy dot drive. Let's go ahead and disable that. Uh, we can enable smart monitoring. Why not? Oops. Probably should focus where my phone is. Uh, jumper freak. Uh, not going to be doing any overclocking right now. Uh, this looks like some sort of NVIDIA or ASUS um, Ethernet configuration utility. CPU, you can see the, the Q 
Core 2 Quad QX6700, 2.66 gigahertz with eight megabytes of total cache. This is what I was talking about, the um, multi-chip modules. So you can see there's actually eight megabytes of total cache, but it's four megabyte per two cores. Okay, let's go ahead and see if everything's good here. Uh, let's go ahead and enable speed, speed, uh, speed step. So I'll keep down clock this uh, CPU when needed. Uh, we'll leave this all auto, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, primary video adapter, PCIe, I don't know if it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, ID function setup, uh, yep, that looks all good. I believe the NVIDIA controller doesn't, uh, either does AHCI or it doesn't really support AHCI very well, or has its own like interesting idea of what it is. HD audio, yep, video LAN, we don't need a boot, yep, that's all fine. USB configuration, yep, enabled, enabled, enabled. Let's go to uh, S1, S3, yep. Let's go to hardware configuration. Yeah, let's go ahead and enable QFAN control. Uh, let's do silent. Uh, you know what, we can leave it as optimal. Chassis, we're gonna enable that. We're gonna do optimal. Okay, temps look all right, 40 degrees in the BIOS. And let's go ahead and go to boot device priority. I had set CD-ROM. In my case, I usually always do CD-ROM, hard disk, and uh, disabled, and disabled. Let's go ahead check Google drives. I'll be gone. Hard disk drives. Yep, it's good. Boot settings configuration. Uh, case open warning. Quick boot. Uh, nope. Looks like we're all good. It's all good. And let's go exit and save changes and let's listen to these fans. Should come back up hopefully. <laughs> Actually I haven't tested this board out too well so. I need to hit reset. Let me go ahead and hit the reset button. Okay, let's see if it comes up now. Hmm, I wonder if it didn't agree with one of the settings I picked. Strange, I didn't really pick any settings that were too crazy. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and then hard power the system off, just by holding the power button. Let's go ahead and try it, turn it on now. Hmm. Strange. Oh, gonna have to do some troubleshooting off screen now. Turned out all I had to do was just unplug it and then uh, plug it back in. I'm guessing it's just a quirk of the old motherboard. That chipset fan is still definitely noisy, but I'll leave it for right now. I could get in a replacement. Uh, I just have to measure how many millimeters it is. But um, so right now everything looks all right. I'm gonna go ahead and set the date and the time. And in part two, we're going to go and actually install an OS and play some games. So um, see you then. I hope uh, hope that I could get a little bit better at this. Maybe get a tripod stand for this phone. Uh, make it a little bit easier. Make it not as grill filming. Maybe a little less cuts in the script or something. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, thanks.